Hey, what's up YouTube? Down the Smartphone Guy coming back at you with another video and today I want to share with you my 72 hour impressions of this device right here. This is the Moto X4. So on paper when this phone was announced it was a phone that I was very excited about. I've been a huge fan of Moto in the past and particularly that X line. So this phone kind of departs from the X line quite a bit, uh, but it's still a phone that I was pretty excited about. So let's go ahead and talk about this device and whether I think it's something that you should consider picking up uh, in 2017 or whether there's another device out there for you. Maybe I can help inform you on your decision. So first thing I wanna talk about is the price. So this is available in three different configurations within the United States. The first version being the unlocked version. So the unlocked version will work on all major carriers within the US so that's a huge thumbs up for $400 you can pick it up on moto.com at Best Buy and a number of other retailers as well so $400 gets you an unlocked version of the phone the second version is the Android one version of the phone so the Android one version is uh, going to have more stock software which Motorola already has pretty darn close to stock software, but the, uh, the Android One version is going to get regular updates from Android or from Google, um, and so you're gonna get Android Oreo a lot faster than the unlocked version, uh, and you'll get regular updates for the next two years. So that's a huge thumbs up for the Android One version. Now that version will also work on Project Fi, um, and so that's one that you might wanna consider. The third version of the phone is actually the version I have, and that is the Amazon exclusive version. So you get $70 off for the one I have, but with that, you're gonna get some lock screen ads. So that's something you may wanna consider. Uh, is it worth that $70 discount? Well, we'll talk about that, or at least my experience, whether that's worth it or not. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into the phone itself now. In terms of build quality, that's the first place I wanna start with. And the build quality on this device is definitely one that looks like nearly a flagship build. Uh, there are definitely some things that you're going to notice that aren't flagshipy, I guess. And the one thing being the fact that we do have some major bezels up on the top and the bottom of this device. So in 2017, you know, flagship, a lot of flagship devices are coming without the major bezels on the top and the bottom. Uh, you're getting mostly all screen phones. This one clearly does not have that. We do have a nice 1080p IPS LCD display, which I think does get plenty bright. So if I turn the brightness all the way up on this thing, you can see that it gets it's very, very bright, easy to view even in the brightest of days. The viewing angles are very good. There's no blue tint uh, to the phone. So that is a huge thumbs up. Now, the back of the phone is where all the magic happens because the back of the phone is glass. It looks beautiful. It's probably more breakable than a metal phone, but still looks very nice. Uh, we have aluminum around the outside. We have type C on the bottom and we have that dual camera set up on the back, which does kind of protrude from the phone just a little bit, uh, but still a very beautiful build. So in terms of build quality, I'm giving this phone an easy A, 95%, 9.5 out of 10. A very beautiful phone, especially for the price point. So the second area I want to talk about is the performance. So your performance could vary depending on which version of the phone you get. Uh, so I have the Amazon exclusive version again. So part of my performance issues with the device could vary depending on whether you have the unlocked version or the Android One version. But my performance with this has been a little bit spotty. It's not, has, it hasn't been as, um, as fast as I would have expected from a Snapdragon 630 processor. Now this one has three gigs of RAM. Uh, outside the US, you can get a version with four gigs of RAM. The one I have only has 32 gigs of onboard storage, but it is expandable through micro SD. The version outside of the United States, there are versions that have 64 gigs of onboard storage, but inside the United States, you're only gonna get the 32 gig version as far as I know. And so with that performance um, has been good. It's certainly not a slow phone. There's no doubt that it's a slow, it's not a slow phone at all. The Snapdragon 635 processor is very efficient. So it's all, uh, number one, it's, it's good on battery, but it's also pretty snappy as well. So this get, has a Geekbench score of right over, right around 4,000, so that's good. Um, but my experience has been, there is just a few hiccups here and there social media as you're going from app to app from Twitter to Facebook to Instagram you will experience just a little bit of lag and the one area that it has a ton of lag in at least for me uh, is in the camera so uh, the camera actually does take some pretty good pictures um, so we have that dual camera setup and it's kind of a, a unique setup because this one has a widescreen camera 
Um, and then also, so that's an eight megapixel camera and then a 12 megapixel camera that's gonna take your normal shots or your, your, your normal non widescreen shots. And on the front, you actually have a 16 megapixel camera. So the front camera, I'm gonna say, is definitely one of the better front cameras you're gonna get on a phone at this price point. So that selfie cam, uh, no doubt, is pretty good. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some pictures here um, in just a little bit, but the selfie cam is definitely very good um, in terms of the mid-range devices. But the rear cameras, um, my only con my only real complaint about the rear cameras is the fact that uh, it kind of lags a lot when it take when you're taking pictures. Now, especially if you're trying to do the depth effect. So this phone does have the ability to do the portrait mode. So uh, you know that's going to blur out the background in your pictures so that it gives you almost like a DSLR-like effect. Um, and with that, there are a number of effects that are available. So you can blur out the background. You can do all kinds of things with that. And so that's really cool, but it takes a long time for it to happen. And so that's the one negative of that. Um, so it's a cool feature, but you're gonna have to make sure that you're, whoever you're taking a picture of, if it's a person, that they're sitting still because that depth effect does take quite a while uh, for it to actually snap that picture. So that's a little bit of a negative on the cameras. But overall, the camera quality is pretty decent. Um, it's not terrible, but it's also not certainly flagship camera um, in terms of the pictures. Now, nighttime pictures is definitely where you're gonna have some issues. Um, so it's definitely a little bit laggy again, but then in, in the dark, it's not going to take as good of pictures because this is, again, we're not talking about a flagship camera, but it's still decent. Um, so the next area I want to talk about is battery life. So I already mentioned that the Snapdragon 630 processor is one that is a very efficient processor. And so far, I've had no issues getting through a full day of usage of this device. In fact, I've been getting around five to five and a half hours of screen on time, which is pretty good considering this only has a 3000 milliamp hour battery. Uh, so for me, I've typically been finishing uh, in the 72 hours or three days that I've been using this as my daily driver. I've been able to get through a day with about 20 to 25% battery. Obviously that's totally dependent on how you're using your device, but I think with average use, you should be able to get through a day no problem. If you're a light user, you're probably gonna get through like a day and a half. If you're a heavy user, you might be finishing the day and you need to top it off. Now this does have turbocharging available and it does come with the turbocharger in the box. So that's a big thumbs up as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the software on the Moto X4. So one thing I really like about Motorola, and this is true of almost all Motorola phones, is the fact that they have basically stock Android running on them. So this one has Android 7.1.1. We are running the September security patch, as you can see there, or maybe you can't see it, but it's running the September security patch, so it's pretty close to being up to date. And uh, we do have, of course, Android Oreo available now, but right now on this device, you're only gonna get Android Nugget 7.1.1. Now, if you get the Android 1 version, again, you're gonna get regular updates from uh, Google and from Motorola, so that's awesome. But with this one, will you ever get Android Oreo? I hope so, um, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, so now let's go ahead and talk about what's so great about Motorola software that's not just stock software. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into an app called Moto. So this is great, it's available on Motorola devices. And uh, there are four things that are available on the Moto X4. So the first one is going to be the Moto Key. Moto Key is gonna allow you to use your fingerprint and you're gonna be able to log into websites um, without your password, you can just use your fingerprint, so that's good. Um, the second one is Moto Actions and that has some very useful features like for instance, double chop to turn on your flashlight or turn it off, try again. Okay, so that worked. Um, then you, you can also flick your wrist to turn on your camera. There it is, there's me. And flick it again, and it's gonna turn the camera around, so, and it'll work uh, vice versa, whatever. If you have the front facing on, it'll flip it around. Um, so that's really cool. The other thing you can do with uh, the Moto Action, so I can use the one button nav, so I can swipe to the right, and it's going to allow me to go back into my recent apps. So we'll go back into Moto. And uh, then you can swipe left to go back. Pretty cool. You can hold down your thumb to launch Google Assistant. There we go. And then you can also hold it down until it vibrates to turn your screen off. All those work very well. 
Now it takes a little bit of getting used to, but that is definitely something that I really like. Now it does also have within Moto, we do have, you, when you pick up your phone, you can see that it's going to give you your, now I don't have any notifications at the moment, but it would give you your notifications on there. So there is the Moto lock screen. And then the last thing that we have is down here at the bottom, we have Moto Voice. So Moto Voice is actually really cool. It's a feature that I, I haven't used a whole lot in the past, but I've been using it a lot on this device. So let's just give a quick demonstration. So let's say, show me the weather. I was covering up the microphone. Show me the weather. There it is. Show me Facebook. Cool. Show me Twitter. Good job. Show me YouTube. Oh, that one didn't work. Show me YouTube. It doesn't like YouTube. Show me YouTube. Oh, there it goes. All right. Got a little disappointed there for a second. All right. So now that I have YouTube up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to listen to some music because we're going to listen to that front firing speaker. So we have that front firing speaker right up here. It's right out of the earpiece. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a listen to that. See how it sounds. Okay, so the speaker actually sounds pretty good. It's not particularly loud, but at least it is front firing, so that's good. I like that, so when you're gaming or if you're watching something, you're watching a video. Whoa. Ah. Okay, let's get out of there. So if you're watching a video, it's obviously going to be front firing at you. If you're playing a game, uh, you're gonna have that front firing speaker, so you're gonna hear a little bit better than if it were bottom firing or obviously rear firing. So at least it's front firing. It's not the loudest of speakers, but it does sound pretty decent. Uh, so what are you missing with this phone? Well, you definitely have a headphone jack, so that's not missing. Um, but really, I mean, in terms of flagship phones, this is really close to having all the features that you'd want in the phone. Now, there is no wireless charging despite having a glass back. There is no wireless charging available on this device, um, but it really has just about everything you could want uh, in a phone. Is it worth $400? That's really kind of up to you. Is it worth $330 if you want the Amazon version? Again, that's going to be up to you and your decision and what's best for you. Now, there are other phones out there right now. Uh, that I could definitely recommend. Uh, the Moto G5 Plus, uh, which is also very similar to this phone, has a lot of features. It's missing a few things that this one has, um, but it's a great device and you can get that one for $200. Uh, HTC also just launched the HTC U11 Life. Now that one is available on T-Mobile for only $300 and there is the uh, unlocked version for $350. That's another phone worth considering. So there are plenty of options out there if you're considering a phone that's in this mid-range price point um, so Moto X4 has a lot to offer. Is it for you? That's up to you again. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful for you in your decision making and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.